Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you how to make something really cool. We're going to take Florida Region Massage and Spa Sales for a large company, and I'm going to show you how to plot them by two variables. So you'll be able to see, you know, sales versus transactions, just like this on the right here. This is what we did right here. And you have different colors to mark, you know, the sales and different sizes of the uh, circles to mark the transaction number. So what I want to show you here is this is the libraries that we're using, ggmap, tidyverse, deployer, read excel. And if you don't have them, use this install packages right here and then just put the name of the package that you need in here. Now please take a moment and do me a favor and like and subscribe down below. I'm trying to break 100 subscribers this weekend. So if you could do that, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Now back to this. Um, so I've used Read Excel here. You can also use Excel Connect. That's another library that reads from Excel sheets. It doesn't matter. You can use any of those. Let me show you the sheet that we're bringing in here. That's this one right here, which has uh, the month, store, state, city, enrollment, sales, and transactions. Okay, enrollment would be they have a loyalty program. A lot of massage businesses have that now, and you join in and you get a free massage every year for you know purchasing one every month or something like that that's what they do so that's what that is and uh, what we've done is we're reading it in here let me show you this code if I move this over here to the right there we go and this is how I'm you know loading in that data it goes right here into this test data 10 I don't have to filter this data because it's already pre-filtered it's just Florida data so I don't have to go and say I don't want the entire United States I just want Florida if I needed to filter it, I have a little piece of code right here that I could use to filter it and say, okay, I want to, like if I had international data, for instance, I didn't want all the international cities and states and I didn't want to take forever to load them in, I could use this to filter it down to the USA or filter it down to state equals Florida or something like that. But I'm not using that today. So then what we do is we first do this, once we've loaded that in, and we're going to take the columns of state and city, because that's how we're going to plot these, and here's the data frames for them and we put them into this tibble so you use this exact code right here and it puts into a tibble or table uh, just based like that then next what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this geomap locations and this is where it pulls the function geocode of those so it's gonna give me the actual longitude and latitude or latitude and longitude if you put it, say it that way of each of these cities. That takes a little while to run that and it'll run through and do that for all of your cities that you have li listed in your uh, 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 this right here. So then we go through that and then we have to bind the uh, latitude, latitude and longitude from the geomap locations to the original here which has our state and city and uh, sales data. And um, so we create that then what we got to do is we have to bring in this sales data from here okay and we're gonna put it into here so this one right here what we're doing is we're creating two new columns sales and transactions and that's gonna bring in from you can see right here from the uh, data frame test data 10 which is right here we're bringing in sales and we're bringing in transaction now make sure you have the spelling and the uh, uppercase or lowercase correct because R is very or particular on that. So if I put sales like this here, it would not pull it because it's actually in the data frame as that. So if I click on test data 10 here, here it is, and you can see it right there. See it's capitalized and here it's capitalized. So I have to stick with that for it. Now if I go back here, I can then, when I create the column, it doesn't matter. I can use lowercase or uppercase. I'm creating this new column. It's whatever I want it to be. Okay, But this is where I'm reading it in, so it has to be correct. Once I've done that, then I have two groupings here. One is for color, or by actually it's sales, but it's going to be a color based thing. And then the other one is transactions, which is going to be a size based differentiator. So, what I've done is I've got a tibble here for both because I'm putting it into a tibble to begin with. And what I'm doing is I'm breaking it up so that if, it's, if the sales are under 10,000, so if I look at this data and I look at the sales, I can see there's some that are 50,000 some that are only a thousand okay so I, I can pretty much see my range right here of what I need to do I might have some outer liars there but let's go back here so what I've done is I've got under 10,000 is blue under 20,000 is orange let me open this up so you can see the whole thing here let's bring that out here there we go and you can see so I've got under 30,000 is yellow under 40,000 is pink and under 50,000 is red and anything above 50,000 is brown so that's the range that we have there 
Then we have the uh, transactions, which is going to be by size. So if it's under 900, so if we go back here, let's look at that data again. Transactions is a much lower range than that. So we've got like 98, 35, up to 2,500, maybe 3,500 there. So let's go back here, and you can see that reflected in the numbers I'm using here. So if it's under 900, it gets a size of 1, the smallest dot. If it's under 1,800, it gets a 2, under 2,700, it gets a 3, all the way up to under 4,500, it gets a 5. And then anything 4,500 and above gets a size 6. Okay, so that's the size differentiator there. So that's how you do that with if nested if else's in R. They both have them very plainly, uh, clearly uh, labeled here. This is what you do. Um, and then the name of it has to go here, and it has to match here. See that? So the name has to be here, and then it has to match here. Okay, when you create when you're creating these columns in there, in the DF dot the data frame map locations. Then I just have one more line of code. This is what's really cool. Down here, I just get the map for Florida in this case because that's Florida that we want. And then what I do is I'm going to do a zoom factor of seven. I could do a six, which would show me the left side, uh, Pensacola and stuff like that. But if I do that, it's going to make the rest of this much smaller. So this is what I want for right now. You could print them both out for a client and say, I need I need both a six and a seven, a differentiator of zoom, maybe an eight. Maybe I want to zoom in on the you know the smaller areas here. Whatever it could be, anything you want to do with it. Um, if you do a five or smaller, um, it's just going to be very small, Florida, for this, and you'll see most of the East Coast. Um, so. This is how you do it, zoom, and then you've got GG, so the get map does the beginning part, <clears throat> and then we bind that into the GG map and GM point, which is going to give us our longitude and latitude based on the DF map location, so it's pulling that from here. And then what we've done is we put our two variables in here, let me show you the whole thing here, by uh, color equals the, the data frame for the, the uh, color one column and the uh, size is going to equal the transactions one column we created those both right here so this way the color will be differentiated by the sales and the size will be differentiated by the transactions and then all you have to do is run each of these pieces the one that takes the longest by the way is going to be where you're building up the uh, this one right here where you're building up the geo code uh, for all of your locations that takes a while and has to go through each and every city. You see, you can see it down here what it does when it does that. It goes through, and you can see right here Ocala, St. Uh, Petersburg, Daytona, Cape Coral, and it can take you five minutes depending on how many locations you have. Okay, um, but that's basically what the code is. Let me show you if I can open up here a little bit more here. That's the entire code. So it starts right here. Okay. And you want to comment out your code, give it some you know meaningful comments and stuff so you know what you did so you can refer back to it and say, hey, here's what I did, and these are the pieces. So I've got a filter in there if I needed it. I don't need it, so I'm not using it. It's commented out. You've got your libraries loaded in. You've got your uh, Excel spreadsheet loaded in here, the Florida region massage sales. You've got, uh, I combine, once I have those in, I combine the state and city into one column because they have to be together for it to be able to look up um, the latitude and longitude. So I've done that into this location in this table and then what I'm doing is I'm taking that and pulling the geocode which is the latitude and longitude for each of those locations and it'll do that because I've done that. Then down below I C bind that in um, which is column bind not R bind, R bind is row bind. So I'm doing that to put both the uh, the latitude and longitude back to the original data frame of the map locations. And then I bring this and I'm going to add to it the two columns. As I told you, I break them out right there. And then I create these two nested if else statements that do sales breakout by color and uh, transactions breakout by size. I could switch them back and forth. I could have transactions in the color and then I could have sales by size, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can do it either way. And then right here, I've got the actual code to graph it, and it's get map uh, and uh, GG map and GM point with the aesthetics of the longitude and latitude, and the color and size are by, based on these two columns right here. 
So this is correct in how it's done, and it will map it. Once you get through this one, that's the longest one here, it's pretty quick. And uh, then you get this pretty little map. Let's bring it back here. And give it a few seconds. It'll snap it back and update it. And uh, it's pretty cool because, there it is, now you can see, like for instance, Tallahassee has two dots in it. A big brown one, which means I've got high sales, and a little blue one, which means uh, that the size, remember, is the transaction. So you've got one that's got low transactions, one that's got high transactions, but the low transactions also has low sales. And look at Jacksonville. It's got three, not two dots. It's got three locations in there, and uh, you've got one of each. You got a big one, a middle sized one, and a little one. So you got stores that are doing different levels, maybe uh or massage uh and spa locations. Maybe that, you know, the lower one needs to be teamed up with the bigger one so it does better sales. Maybe it's newer. I don't know that from this data. It doesn't tell me the opening date. Um look at Gainesville, same thing. So you got a pink one and a blue one. You've got three in this one, two big ones and one little one. That's kind of neat. Um how you can see this, Fort Lauderdale has a pink one, Miami has, looks like two, a pink one and a, maybe a reddish one underneath it. You have to blow it up to see the uh, different colors. So see, if I had zoomed it down, I wouldn't necessarily be able to see the little pieces inside there. So you have to pick the correct zoom level. In this case, remember it's zoom 7 that I picked here. So I hope you found this interesting. It's really cool. It helps you to see for a company or the department or the data science people or the marketing people, you know, the breakout of their locations and how they're doing, how they're doing with sales, how they're doing with transactions, how many people are coming in the door, how much money are they spending, you know, and they can figure from this, you know, they put their costs up against, they can see how profitable they are, you know, what do they need to change? Why are some locations more profitable or selling more than others? And it's not necessarily always just because one is in Miami, which is a big city, and one is in Jacksonville, which is a lot smaller. Well, look at that. You know, Jacksonville's doing a lot better than Miami in this case. Maybe it's been there longer. Massage uh, and spa locations tend to take a while to build up their clientele. Maybe this one is newer. Maybe this one's, even though it's newer, has sales that are growing faster than that one, but we can't see it in this type of graph. Maybe we need to change these up and maybe include a differentiator of, you know, like a certain time frame. Okay. Uh, this is, again, just July uh, sales as you saw that earlier it wasn't like every month of the year in it so it's just July so maybe Miami during July it's hot and people go elsewhere I don't know you know maybe um, Jacksonville is popular maybe Tallahassee they've got a place there it's really popular it's the only brown one I think I see out here so that's over 50,000 in uh, sales during the month so it could be anything, um, but it's interesting that you get to be able to see and visualize your data and be able to start to see, you know, and interpret things and maybe start pulling questions and then say, oh, you know, hey, we need to look at this or let's look deeper into this. Maybe we need to go and look at the past three months now and see if it's been changing, if it hasn't been growing. Maybe the Tallahassee's really picked up and grown really fast and, the, you know, maybe uh, Clearwater is dropping. We don't know that just by looking at this data. This is just one month's data. It would be nice to have... Uh, April and May and maybe even back to January or maybe even a whole year's data that'd be even better but this is what we have in this data set it's July uh, Florida only so it doesn't show me you know Tennessee or anything like that it's just Florida data um, but thanks for watching I hope you found this helpful and educational and interesting um, it's a great way to, to look at your data in a new way and uh, start getting and developing some cool insights on it. it's what we use in data science and data analysis on a daily basis uh, thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe and like down below. I'm trying to break 100 uh, subscribers this month, or actually this weekend if possible. So uh, please do me a favor and uh, subscribe and like. And plus, check out my channel. i got a lot of other great videos just like this that show you all kinds of great stuff on data science, data analysis, uh, Alteryx, um, uh, Excel, you name it, data wrangling, uh, all kinds of how-to and informational stuff that's really cool that we use in data science and data analysis every day. Thanks again for watching and uh, have a great day.